Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to learn how to play the cooperative time heist game, Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. This two to four player game, designed by Brett J. Gilbert and Matthew Dunstan, and published by Funforge Games. The nefarious Professor Evil has invented a time machine, and he's using it to steal precious artifacts all throughout history. It is up to you as time agents to try to steal them back and return them to their rightful times. Will you be successful in c rescuing your precious treasures or will the professor manage to lock them up and steal them away forever? Find out as we go to the table and learn how to play Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. Place the game board in the middle of the area. Put the Professor Stan D in the laboratory and the clock marker on the space marked with the 12 of the main clock. Place a locked door on each of the 18 doorways. Shuffle the 12 room cards in a pile face down. This is the room deck. Place it face down next to the board. Shuffle the 12 switch tiles and put them in a stack as well. Draw the first six room tiles and put a switch with the offside facing up in each room. These switches are deactivated. Draw the last six cards of the room deck and place a switch with the activated side face up in each of these rooms. These switches are operational. Before starting the game, set up three treasure tiles as follows. Shuffle the treasure tiles and place them face down in a stack in the treasure space on the side of the board. And we're going to put them up here where you store them later on in the game. We'll talk about that later. Reshuffle all 12 room cards then place the deck face down on the side of the board. Flip the top room card face up to reveal the top treasure space of this room. So we're going to flip a treasure and we're going to see that it's going to go in the cellar. Right there. Place the red marker on the treasure tile. Place the other red marker on the main clock of the board. To know where to place the red marker on the main clock, look at the number of minutes on the treasure space. So we have 50. And counterclockwise from the clock marker, each space counts as 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Flip the next room card to place the next treasure green using the same process. So the laboratory, we flip up a treasure, we put it in the laboratory with Professor Evil. Boy, we're giving him a good head start right now. And we take the green marker and we do the same process. So we'll put the green on 50 and I'll, I like putting the marker on top of the minutes. Do it again for the third treasure blue. Do not shuffle the room cards back into the deck. Important! At the beginning of the game, the clock marker is on the starting space, 12. But it will move forward as the game progresses. When setting up a treasure, always counterclockwise from the current clock marker position. Like so. Each player chooses a character. Place your character tile face down in front of you. We're going to put our character tiles off to the side and right here, off camera. The special power must not be visible as it is not active for now. Shuffle your action cards to form 
your action deck and place it face down next to your character tile. Place your character standee anywhere outside of the castle. Put any unused character tiles back to the box as well as their action cards. And that completes the setup. Randomly decide who goes first. Play then continues clockwise. On your turn, do the following things in order. Number one, draw two cards. Reveal the top two cards of your action deck. Number two, take actions. Take three actions and play one action card. And number three, roll the dice. Roll the dice to find out what the professor does next and how quickly time is running out. At the end of your turn, pass the dice clockwise to the next player. First, draw the top two action cards from your deck and look at them. Read them to the other players and then lay them face up. When your deck is used up, shuffle all six action cards and place them face down to make a new deck. Reminder, you can only use one and discard the other. On your turn, you may take up to three regular actions in the castle and may additionally use one of the action cards you revealed this turn. The regular actions are move, unlock a door, flip a switch, and rescue a treasure. You may take three of these actions in any order, including taking the same action more than once. During your turn, before, between, or after your regular actions, you may play one of the two action cards you drew at the start of your turn. Read the cards aloud to the other players and follow the instructions afterward. Discard both action cards. For instance, play them face up from the top of your action deck. So this one says the professor cannot lock doors this turn. And this one says swap locations with another player. This one seems like it'd be more handy. So we would play this one and discard the other one. You can move into the castle from outside through the windows and you can also enter through here as well. Into the gallery, the library, and the ballroom. Moving from outside into the citadel or moving through an open doorway to an adjacent room counts as one action. However, you cannot move into the castle through the entrance hall because technically you weren't invited. You cannot move into or through a room with the professor in it. And you cannot move through locked doors. You cannot move out of the castle unless the professor throws you out. If you use an action to unlock a door, remove a locked door marker from one of the three doorways in the room you are currently in and put it aside. The treasures are all protected by a series of traps. You must deactivate them by flipping off their switches. If the switch in your current location is active, use an action to flip it off. Flip it over to its opposite side. Note, in some instances, you might be able to flip a switch anywhere in the castle. This includes the room where the professor is. In other words, the professor does not prevent you from flipping the switch in his room. Each treasure shows one, two, or three different types of switches to rescue a treasure. All the switches of every type shown on the treasure must be off. 
if you are in the same room as a treasure tile and all switches of the type shown on the tile are flipped off, you can use an action to rescue the treasure. When you rescue a treasure, place the rescued treasure tile face up in the saved treasure spaces. Reactivate all the switches depicted on that treasure and recover the treasure marker. So, if we grabbed the crown jewel right here, I'm going to try to zoom in. So we would need to deactivate one keypad, two cameras, and three buzz saws. When that's deactivated, we would then rescue the treasure and place it in our saved treasure um, space. We would also remove the red token from the clock. After that, you set up a new treasure by revealing the top, top treasure tile and room card from the stack and deck beside the board. Place the treasure in the matching room and then place the treasure markers from the previous treasure onto the tile and the main clock, just as you did during setup. So for example, like I said, we got the crown jewel, we removed that, we replaced it with the hope diamond, and it told us to put it in the trophy room. At the end of each player's turn, the professor takes a turn. Pick up and roll all three dice. The combination of results of the white professor and colored dice tells you what the professor does next. The result of the black dice tells you whether to move the clock marker forward one or two steps at the end of the turn. The professor die shows one, two, or three chevrons. The professor walks the number of steps through adjacent rooms in the castle. The color die tells you which doors he moves through. There's red, green, and blue. On each step, move the professor through the door in the professor's current location matching the color die to identify that door. Check the color of carpet that is in front. So for example, I ruled a green. So that means he would move through here because it has a green carpet right here. Whenever the professor moves through an open doorway, he locks it. The lock door marker taken from the professor supply on the doorway. The professor can always move through locked doors. He's, it's his home after all. If the professor moves into a room with a switch that is off, he flips it to its active side. If the professor moves into an occupied room, all of its occupants must leave the castle to avoid being found. Place all standees outside of the castle. If the professor die shows the secret passage symbol, move the professor immediately to the room with the treasure matching the color die. Then the professor locks all doors in his room, flips the switches in this room to the active side and chases off any characters from the room. So for example, we rolled the secret passage and the red die. We move into the trophy room because it was the red die and this is the red treasure. We flip this lock on. There are no, there are no peep intruders there so we don't chase them off and all the doors are locked. But if it was the case, characters would exit the building, the doors would be locked, and the switch would be flipped on. If the professor die shows the five or ten minute symbol, the professor does not move, but he gives you less time to rescue one of the treasures. The color die shows you which treasure is affected. If a treasure marker ends up on the same space as the clock marker or even farther, then it is lost. And we'll talk about that soon.
If the clock marker ever moves clockwise onto or past a treasure marker or a treasure marker ever moves counterclockwise onto or past the same space as the clock marker, the professor immediately stashes that treasure in his secret strong room. So, for example, let's say we got five and green. That means the clock marker will move to the five and the green. He will then capture the crystal skull and place it in his lost treasures. When this happens, you immediately place the treasure tile matching the treasure marker on the side of the board of the lost treasure space and remove the matching treasure marker from the main clock and board. Then set up a new treasure by revealing the top treasure tile and room card from the stack. So we have the parlor and we have the bust of Nefertiti from the stack and deck on the side of the board. Place the treasure in the matching room and place the treasure marker from the previous treasures onto the tile in the main clock just as you did during setup. If the clock marker ever moves onto or past one of the idea icons at the 15 minute and 45 minute positions, one player will be allowed to flip their character tile to reveal the side with their special power. When this happens, the players can decide together which player's character gets flipped. While a player's character tile is flipped over, that player gains two new powers. An ability the player may use on their subsequent turn all around. And a powerful action that they may take once, that's this one down here, on their turn by flipping their character tile down. When a player takes the powerful action, they must flip their tile and also losing the ability. However, the same tile may be flipped again later in the game. If the clock marker moves onto or past one of the idea icons in the group and the group decides to put uh, to flip his tile. At the end of your turn, pass the dice clockwise to the next player. The professor loses the game if the players rescue four treasures before the professor. The professor wins when all of the and the players lose if the professor stashes four treasures in his secret strong room before the players rescue them. And that's all you need to know to play Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. If you have any questions about this game, please put them down in the comments below. If you are enjoying this channel, please make sure to give us a like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. And if you're really enjoying this content, please consider being a Patreon supporter on our Patreon page. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, be on the lookout for our upcoming gameplay video on this game. But until then, thanks for the views. Mm -hmm.